Evolutionists proudly claim that the flood narrative is disproven by modern sea levels. They cavalierly ask, if there was a global flood, where did all the water go? Now, real science has answered that question with the discovery of a vast ocean of water deep inside the Earth that holds three times the amount of water in all of Earth's oceans combined. I guess they got their answer, but I just had to investigate. In 1879, a large meteorite entered Earth's atmosphere, breaking up and landing over a large area in a remote part of Australia, close to the Tenem Station. A large number of pieces were collected within a short time, and because the elements had very little time to contaminate them, they have since become invaluable to the study of meteorites and their composition. Dubbed the Tenem Meteorite, it was examined and found to contain complex organic chemistry but its most significant component was yet to be recognized. In 1953, Ted Ringwood had just finished his master's degree in field mapping and petrology with honors. For his doctorate, he decided to focus on applying geochemistry to an understanding of the mineralogical constitution of the Earth's mantle. In his studies, Ringwood became interested in germinates, minerals based on germanium, which, like silicon, can form complex compounds similar to the organic compounds based on carbon. Using them as an analog, he hypothesized that under high pressure conditions, silicates such as olivine could form spinal crystalline structures. He also theorized that due to repeated impacts contributing to Earth's formation, the lower mantle should be comprised of similar materials. The only problem was that no such mineral had ever been found. In 1966, Ringwood and Alan Major synthesized exactly that under laboratory conditions with exceedingly high pressures that mimicked those in the lower mantle around 400 kilometers down. Ringwood published his findings in Nature along with an article predicting seismic discontinuity should be discovered at several depths and specifically at around 400 kilometers. Soon after, seismologists such as Paul G. Richards had amassed enough seismic data to indicate that there was indeed a compositional change of materials at the depths Ringwood had predicted. The mineral he created, however, was yet to be found in Nature. In March 1969, a team led by Ray Binns published a paper in Nature announcing the discovery of just such a mineral in an inclusion in the Tenem meteorite. This mineral was notable in that it also incorporated minute amounts of water, upwards of 2%. In honor of his work on the subject, the mineral was dubbed Ringwoodite. A notable feature of spinal crystals is that they weather easily in the low pressure environment on the Earth's surface, but remain stable in high pressure environments. Assuming that the Earth was formed by the process of accretion from asteroids and debris in the early solar system, it was deduced that the Earth's interior should contain large amounts of ringwoodite. If this were true, it would also partially answer the question of where Earth's water came from, being released in the low-pressure environments near the surface. This hypothesis remained untested until 2008 when a brown diamond was discovered in Huina, Brazil. Geochemist Graham Pearson and his team were examining the diamond for impurities when a 40 micrometer grain of unknown material was discovered within. This material was later revealed to be ringwoodite. This particular sample only happens to contain an estimated 1% water, but knowing its capacity, the team deduced that the transition zone of the Earth's mantle should contain anywhere from one to three times the amount of water in all of Earth's oceans. While the creationist arguments seem to assume that water from the surface had seeped down into the mantle to create this vast reservoir of water after a flood, it is important to note that the crust reaches temperatures beyond the boiling point of water only a couple kilometers down. This necessarily prevents seepage of any sort. Additionally, this water is formed from the shocking of minerals, combining hydroxide ions into water, which is chemically part of the mineral. It is safe to conclude that the water trapped in Earth's mantle has never been on Earth's surface. In previous episodes, I have addressed the predictive value of a theory. Whether or not a theory is ultimately true, its strength is measured by the predictions it makes. A theory is actually more useful to scientists than facts because a good theory necessarily leads to the discovery of even more facts. In this case, Ted Ringwood deduced from the Earth accretion theory that ringwoodite should be plentiful deep within the Earth. The fact that we have found ringwoodite in the Huina Diamond and several others since is a confirmation of that prediction, and another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.